All right, so we are on page 334 and 335, and then we are finished with this story. Okay, so we only have a few pages left. Um, but go ahead and follow along as I read. So we're looking right now at a picture, right, of what do you think that is? Different cloth types. It looks a lot like this picture I showed you earlier, doesn't it? Just a little different. Okay, so we can see the different types of clouds. I'm looking cirrocumulus, cirrostratus, cumulonimbus, cirrus altocumulus, altostratus, nimbu nimbulostratus, stratocumulus, cumulo cumulus, and stratus. Okay, so we can see all of those different types of clouds. Okay, what do you notice about those clouds? Well, we can look at the side where it says high, about 19,800 feet. 6,000 meters middle, about 6,600 feet, 2,000 meters and low. So why would it have that on this picture? Why would it have that? It shows how high the cloud is, right? It shows where in the sky that cloud is. Do you think that maybe helped him name these clouds? Yeah, it did. Okay, so the height of the cloud also helped him name it um, and classify it too. So um, let's look at that caption down at the bottom. It says, you can tell different types of clouds apart by their shape, so by their shape, and how high they are in the sky. Okay, so they classified them based on their shape and how high they are in the sky. Make sure you know that, okay? Their shape and how high they are in the sky. The sky often contains a mix of the 10 types of clouds. Okay, so sometimes it's not just one type of cloud, it's a lot of different types of clouds. Um, now, do you think if it's a cirrocumulus cloud, which is up high in the air, and a stratus cloud, you might not be able to see the cirrocumulus cloud, okay? So keep that in mind too. You might only be able to see the stratus cloud, but sometimes there's more than one type. It says, today the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, an emergency of the United Nations located in Switzerland is the authority on clouds and weather. The WMO still uses these 10 basic names. As news of this cloud naming system spread, scientists often or er, scientists asked him to give speeches about weather. Luke's weather observations were published in 1818 in two book volumes called The Climate of London seven lectures on meteorology. His textbook about the science of meteorology was published in 1837. So he had a lot of accomplishments, didn't he? Um, let's go ahead and look. I want you guys to tell me um, the let's think about it question. So it says, use multiple text features to locate information. How do the diagram and caption help you understand the different clouds? Okay, so how do the diagram and caption help us understand the different clouds? Now it tells us in the caption that clouds are identified or clouds are classified by their height, right? And how they look. Now, if we look at that um, picture, we can see their height and we can see how they look, right? So we can kind of get a better understanding of how they decided to classify these, these clouds, okay? So we can look at their height because it tells us their height on the side. And then we can also see if they're puffy if they're more like sheet-like or if they're wispy, okay? There's a lot of different things we can look at. And that picture and that caption really give us more information and help us understand how they decided to classify these clouds, okay? Many people admired and praised Luke, but he always tried to be a good Quaker and stay humble. Luke and Mariabella had a long marriage and he enjoyed spending time with their eight children Two of his sons worked in, a chemist, in his chemist shop when they grew up. Luke's sister, Elizabeth, said that in his later years, he was always having some of his children and grandchildren with him. Even as a very old man, Luke loved to watch the sky. By the time he died on March 21st, 1864, at the age of 91, he and his cloud naming system were famous around the world. So he did accomplish a lot in his life. He made a lot of newspapers. Um, he got put in a lot of newspapers. Um, a lot of people talked about his cloud naming system too, and it became famous. And that's what we use 
pretty much yet today to name clouds. Um, let's go ahead and look at that let's think about it question. It says, what information did the author provide about Luke's life and character? How would you describe Luke Howard? So how would you guys describe Luke Howard based on what we've read? Well, I'll tell you what, I think he was very determined, okay? He was a chemist, right? He loved his hobby so much. He loved the clouds and learning about clouds and studying clouds so much that he took, his, he took the time yet to learn about clouds and the weather, okay? So he followed his passion. He was very determined to follow his passion and learn more about that stuff. Um, it also says on this page even that he was a he was very humble. He was um, he always tried to stay very humble. We learned what humble meant in the last book, right? Humble means more um, like you're not full of yourself. You're more meek. You're more like kind of quiet. You don't brag about yourself, right? That's what humble means. So he tried to stay very humble too throughout his life, even though he accomplished all these things. He didn't bring much attention to himself saying, huh, I did this or I did that, kind of bragging. He didn't do that. He stayed more humble. Um, and then again, throughout his whole life, I feel like he was more of a family man, right? He was. He sounded pretty close with his family. He followed what his dad wanted to do, right? Um, he was close, close with his family at the beginning, and it says he was close with his family even at the end, too. It says uh, Luke's sister Elizabeth said that in his later years, he was always having some of his children and grandchildren with him. So they were always, he was always with his family. Even though he had all this stuff going on, he still made time for his family and he always wanted to be with his family, okay? Um, so go ahead and continue on with the slide presentation because we're done with this story. Uh, yeah, just continue on with the slide presentation and do as it asks you to.